what do you feel are the real the issues for mental health and aging in Europe? Well, I hosted the event today because I wanted to really highlight the issue of we're growing older. Uh, the statistics are there. We're going to have live to our hundreds or our eighties, whatever it'll be. And there are issues around um, mental health. We don't do, do enough for elderly people in mental health. Yes, we support people in the workplace. Uh, we're very much aware of mental health issues as a whole and changing in society. What are the issues for uh, elderly people? Somebody made a very important contribution to today and they distinguished the difference between isolation and loneliness. You can be isolated, but yet not lonely. And a lot of our elderly people are lonely, uh, particularly they mentioned about those that are single families, single units. They don't have a, a lifetime partner. They don't have a companion. And uh, that can have a huge impact on people and their mental health, which leads then to more pressure on our services, if you like. But the most important thing is for the individuals. And if old age now starts, when does it start? It starts, traditionally we think of it as 60 plus, but in fact we're going to live much longer. So it's an issue that we all need to tackle and be aware of and look to other countries and see what they're doing, share experiences and share best practice. What is the situation like in Ireland for older people? Well, as it currently stands, we're a growing ageing population. Um, we know the number of people over the age of 65 will double in the coming years. The number of people over the age of 80 will travel. So what we want to do is make sure that we are prepared for this. Um, I think for a long time, getting older has been seen as an issue only relating to health. However, we feel as a government that there needs to be a whole of government approach um, to ensure that people um, not only live longer, but that they have healthier, happier lives for longer. Um, as a government in 2013, we published the National Positive Ageing Strategy. Um, it takes a whole of government approach, again, looking at not just issues relating to health, but social, economic, environmental, um, and we have implemented that framework essentially through um, our towns, our cities, our councils. So we have developed um, and, and gotten to a stage where we are now um, an age-friendly country. So our, our counties are age-friendly, our cities and our towns, and sometimes it's doing some of the, the smallest things, so making sure that our buildings are accessible, making sure that uh, there is a flexible transport, and making sure that there is age-friendly spaces within our towns and our centres. Are you surprised that Age Europe held Ireland up as an example of best practice in Europe? Well, I think Ireland has been leading the way in this regard. Um, the launch of our National Positive Ageing Strategy um, is a whole-of-government approach. Um, and I think if we're going to actually deal with uh, the challenges that arise, and, and I think we used to need to use our words carefully, getting older should never be seen as a burden on society, but it does pose challenges, people living longer, um, so I think the fact that we have a strategy and a plan in place, we're now actually moving on to the next stages of that strategy. So at the moment it is a framework, it has been implemented on a county by county basis, um, but what we will be doing in the coming months is actually developing a framework and a forum for the various organisations, both at a public and a private community voluntary level, to come together and to identify key issues that they want to see us address into the future. Um, and that will then be linked in with our various different departments, so transport, finance, health obviously, and various other areas. So we are at the beginning of the, the I suppose, the development of this, but at the same time I think um, we're moving at a, at a good pace and, and I think it's looking promising. What do we need to be doing at a European level to promote mental health, the mental health of our ageing population? Well, we need certainly to coordinate better and exchange good practices about what is known already, the challenges faced by older people. Uh, for the moment, we don't know enough about uh, depression, for example, just after retirement or when you lose your partner. We don't know enough about the risk of burnout uh, among informal carers who are often older people and most of the cases are older women. Um, we need also doctors to understand better the uh, impact, for example, of medications on older people because we know they take a lot of them, uh, most of them, uh, for chronic diseases, and that's all very well. But the uh, impact this has on uh, the level of depression is uh, unfortunately not um, addressed properly. So this can be best done at EU level, uh, sharing experiences, for example, on uh, what you can do to improve the situation. You mentioned the high incidence of suicide among older people. Is this a growing problem? It is because, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the aging of the population, demographic change, has uh, consequences um, among society. That is that older people are not perceived positively and aging, the aging process is not perceived for 
in a positive way. So this has a, really an impact on retiring people in particular, because from one day to the next, they lose the, their sense of life, they lose the place they had in society. And for many of them, this leads to severe depression and unfortunately to a higher risk of suicide. What are the issues of mental health for our aging population? I think there are a number of issues as we uh, start aging in life and I think what we were hearing today at our meeting was really the issue that we need to look at this much earlier in life and not wait until problems start and we were hearing also the difference between isolation and loneliness and I thought that was an excellent point that some people don't mind being isolated others can be in a crowd but be lonely and I think we need to pay attention to that because we do hear a lot about increasing amounts of depression anxiety and perhaps a loss of purpose and a loss of meaning in later life. So there are some really big challenges and 191 million people in Europe are over 50. So what can they do to help their situation and what can the population, governments do at large to help the situation of uh, those suffering from mental health problems? Well, I think we often hear about old age being referred to as the third age. And I think we spend a lot of time thinking about education and learning in the younger years. We think a lot about our working lives. Perhaps it's time for us to actually think about active third age and what we, what we need to do as citizens to keep ourselves involved and active and connected. And perhaps there's a role for the workplace there as well in not just jettisoning us at the age of 60 or 65, but actually how do we wind down or wind into a different sort of uh, retirement? Is there anything we can do to encourage intergenerational cooperation? Uh, sometimes you feel like old people are put into a silo by themselves and categorized. They're just another part of the population. What can we do to improve those links? Well, I think we've probably, most of us had experience of having grandparents. And I think the great thing about grandparents is that they often bring a lot of wisdom and they're also not your parents. So they're not telling you off. Um, and I think we should look at how we bring together those, those generations, the younger generation, the older generation, and share that wisdom so that young people perhaps can reflect and maybe say and talk in a way that they can't talk with their own friends or with their parents. So, but we have to maybe work at that to make it happen. Otherwise, people do go off into their own silos.